years, um, all while leveraging the technology that we have. A lot of people have, you know, kind of felt that, um, you know, we're back in person. So some of the tech has been put away and we stand strongly in the belief that we should continue to utilize the tech as much as possible um, because it's just better practice, um, not just for ourselves, but for our students as well, uh, with the constant and um, changing of technology and how fast it's quickly growing within uh, society. Next slide, please. So, um, so what we're going to do is first part, we're going to look at our four tips to get started. So before you even start your di digital newspaper, um, these are four things that you're going to want to take into consideration. Go ahead, Juan. First thing, get permission, right? Talk to your admin. I'm sure they're not going to turn you down if you want to have a newspaper, but definitely get permission and secure a room. And so this is going to be um, basically where you guys are meeting, where you're going to work at. Um, you need to figure out what is the approval process going to be. So if you're going to have students submitting articles or teachers submitting things, what is that approval process going to be? But ultimately, um, before you can go through with creating a digital newspaper, you are going to have to um, get a sponsor. So it could either be yourself because you're in this presentation or in the session today, or it could be somebody um, on the campus that is willing to oversee um, that project in its entirety. Gwen, can you go back to the other slide previously, please? And so after you... Uh, <laughs> go forward. Uh, after you um, secure a spot, you're going to want to, we were on slide five, you're going to want to go ahead and get a newspaper staff, right? So you're going to have to figure out who's going to run the um, newspaper. So a teacher advisor is going to be the one that kind of oversees the entire thing. You'll have an editor. That's, of course, the person that's going to decide what's going in the paper, where it goes, who writes what, kind of assigning all the positions and roles. You'll have a series of writers, photographers who can go out to like class functions. Um, your writers will, of course, also be your interviewers. And of course, you're gonna to wanna to have people on the newspaper team who have a really good eye for layout and graphic design. Because as we know, if something isn't quite appealing to the eye or if it doesn't flow very well, it's gonna be um, hard for people to you know, gain, capture their interest and for them to want to be able to even continue to read your newspaper. Next slide, please. So then, of course, you're going to choose a design software. There are tons of softwares that are free and available online, but our main focus today is going to be using Google Slides because, as you know, we are a Google district, and what's great about this is that opportunity for your students to collaborate is there, and they all have their own um, personal uh, credentials that they could get into Google. Plus, you could always put it in a shared drive or in a shared folder to where you all have access to it while you're you know, able to collaborate uh, better. You're also going to want to dis, dis, um, discuss issues and distributions. How often are you going to uh, send out an issue? Is it going to be monthly? Is it going to be quarterly? Um, when they're going to be distributed, who is going to be releasing that link? Is it something that goes out in a mass email? Maybe your campus uses Remind or Class Dojo, and so maybe it's a link to that um, newspaper document that way so families can read it. Uh, so it's definitely discussing the best way to distribute that out to, um, you know, your community. And then, um, again, taking into consideration how many slides or, you know, pages your newspaper is going to have. Because as you know, if it's too lengthy, people might not read it in its entirety, but just keeping it short and brief that, you know, it's going to continue to capture people's attention. Next slide, please. So now we're going to look at an intro to newspapers. So basically newspapers, it's a collection of texts um, that contain essays. It could be some form of a short essay, articles, stories, poems. Um, it can be printed or online. And so in this case, we are going to um, be sharing it online. Uh, and then, sorry, Juan, I can't see the slide. <laughs> And it's going to be published on a, a, a monthly schedule or however it is that you're going to publish it. And then it's going to have certain topics. Um, and because this isn't a general newspaper like what you would read, like, you know, in the Express News or something like that, um, our topics are going to just be a little bit different. Next slide, please. 
So for the, this is just a couple of different examples of topics that a newspaper at a campus might have. Maybe there's some kind of district news. Um, maybe it's something about like our food drives, stuff like that. A lot of things that you want to share from our face um, specialist or our face department. Anything about family and community engagement, uh, fine arts. Maybe you know choir on your campus is going to have a celebrate uh, um, a performance or band. Um, maybe there's health tips. Maybe letting your community know, as you know, I know there's a lot of COVID testing sites, maybe having that in there. A library corner, maybe the librarian wants to advertise events or special activities that they have planned. Maybe you want to give, you know, a snapshot of the lunch calendar for the week. Um, any upcoming sports, like sports activities or, you know, stuff like that. Um, and these last three are kind of very special because I think it's really important that you at some point have some kind of student spotlights, right? I know we do a lot of, I, in traveling to all the campuses, you hear how different students are spotlighted and, um, you know, they may, you know, be asked to take a picture and their pictures on a bulletin board. But I mean, think about doing like, you know, a photo in the newspaper along with, you know, why are they being spotlighted with like a little description um, or maybe you even link in a video of talking to them, you know, about, you know, what is it that's making them stand out and, you know, be a spotlight student. So that way they can verbally express that and other students can watch it and say like, hey, you know, like I can do those things. I can, you know, have better um, studying habits or, you know, do these kinds of activities. So they too can at some point become a student spotlight. And then of course, the same thing would be with teachers. You know, you guys do some amazing things in the classrooms and definitely getting other teachers to see that and um, be able to spotlight that is uh, truly rewarding. And then, of course, any kind of technology tips that you have, like maybe um, I know right now, as far as like cyberbullying, all that stuff is, you know, really bad, especially with the constant usage of tech, but maybe doing something in the realms of like, you know, did you know, you know, and here's some, you know, resources or videos that students and families can watch to just kind of be on the lookout or, you know, what is cyberbullying or where cyberbullying could be um, reported to you and, you know, so on and so forth. Next slide, please. So basically your newspaper is gonna have these three features or this structure. You have your cover, which would be your first page slide um, in this digital newspaper. So it might have like your school, um, your school logo. Uh, it might have, you know, a picture of the staff, like maybe they take a group photo or something like that. Um, you're going to have various articles. The articles will have titles and images. And then, of course, you could always do advertisements. I know in our, um, in regular, you know, newspapers, uh, they'll do advertising, advertisements and that's so they can collect money. So, you know, people might buy an, a slot to advertise their business. And so that money will go to the campus. So there is always a way for you guys to gain some kind of proceeds off of it. If you look out or reach out to maybe some local small businesses and you're willing to advertise maybe something that they have coming up and you can tell them like to buy an advertisement spot, like it will be this much for us to keep it in our newspaper this long. And then you can work with your PTA or PTO on how to to collect those funds for your newspaper, um, you know, club. So that way you can be able to save money and use for other activities um, for your newspaper club. Next slide. So do we have at this point any questions so far? So, so far we just kind of just like, what do you need to know to get started? And just basic overview of just the design of it. No questions? Awesome. Okay, let's keep going. It helps that we, um, that I talk fast. <laughs> In this case, it helps because we started eight minutes late. <laughs> um, but okay, so now thinking of planning your article. So how do you plan an article? So as a collective team, you know, whoever's on your newspaper staff, you're going to brainstorm ideas and topics of articles. What do you think your people want to read? What do they need to know? What should they know? From those ideas, you then, you know, may, 
look up some research, depending on what the topic is. You may have to develop some interview questions to interview somebody, depending again on what the article is about. And then an outline is a quick uh, version of what the article may look like. Like, is it going to have an intro? What is the body going to look like? Um, closing, you know, are you going to have a written by and their little, you know, cute little headshot photo with their name and their grade, you know, you know, all very legit, the same way you would see in a very professional newspaper. Um, so just planning all that out as a collective team, sitting at a conference table, doing it, and then, you know, um, delegating all the jobs, all the roles, and then everybody just going. And then of course, you always want to have those meetings where y'all are getting back together. And it's just like, where are we? How can I, as the teacher sponsor, support you? Um, how can the editor support you? Are you stuck? You know, do you, we need to help you come up with a time to interview? Or, you know, when are you going to interview? Do we need the photographer to go with you? So there's so many real world experiences, because it's, you know, you're going to hit um, ELAR teaks, you're going to hit a lot of tech application takes um, or um, standards. And so there's so many different things that these students who participate in such a club um, could really gain, especially in regard to planning, right? Pre-planning and not even just planning the article in the newspaper, but, you know, calendar planning, like, okay, I'm interviewing so-and-so on this day, this time, what supplies do I need to take with me? Do I have everything, you know, um, stuff like that. So a couple of things to consider. Next slide, please. So now we're going to go into designing your layout. So this is really important, visual design. I mean, look for your OCD students. Those are the ones you want to put on top of the layout and graphic design. Like, I'm all about it. That is me. I mean, look at my slide, right? Um, but yeah, so the ones that like have, you know, the eye where it's like, okay, it's lined up, the colors all match, like, you know, click on all the fonts. Are the fonts the same um, style? Are they the same size? Like, you know, being careful with which colors are being used where and if it's being used to emphasize a certain point. Looking at the images, making sure they're not pixelated. Please make sure they're not pixelated. Oh my God, it drives me nuts. But yeah, so like being like careful with the images, the layout, like, is it easy to read? Like, does it follow the eye? Like, how does it work? So all important things. Now, when it comes to graphic design, I can go on and on about this. I could do an entire like two hour PD on it, but we all have a good eye, right? We all know what looks good. We all know what grabs our attention. So it's really important to constantly get your students or anybody on that newspaper staff to constantly tell themselves like, if you were an outsider reading this, what would you think? Like, what should be changed? And constantly, constantly asking that, asking a fresh pair of eyes, like even somebody who's not on the newspaper staff, like, does this look good? What would you change? You know, what do we need to really get the point across um, for what we want to share with our audience? Next slide. So, yes, Ms. Garcia, you have a question? Um, so we have the typography. So it's the art of arranging letters and text in a way that makes the words legible, it's clear, and it's visually appealing. So here we can see an example of a text. We have the title, which is very large, right? And then we have a really nice photo that was used. So without even reading anything, and I don't even think those texts, it's just like random words. Um, but without reading it, I can see like, okay, this has something to do with the desert, like, you know, the pictures appealing, there's none of those um, like markings on it to where you can see that you stole it from online <laughs> somewhere. Um, so I mean, that's another thing. Don't do that. It drives me crazy. Um, but yes, so thinking about those kinds of things. And then of course here, it could have gone like an essay, right? Long paragraphs, but just visually appealing, just having those two columns just completely makes you feel like, oh, it's not a lot to read, or at least it does to me, right? It's just a little easier on the eyes and on the mind. So um, so making sure that the, the text is standing out as far as size, if it needs to be bolded, if it needs to be colored. And again, making sure you're careful with the type of text that you use. There's some text that people um, have trouble reading, especially kids nowadays, they can't read cursive. So be very careful with that. Um, 
keep the article itself readable and simple. Um, Times New Roman is always a good one to go to. And then always make sure the justification um, is set. You know, how is it set, how, um, direction, alignment, stuff like that. Next slide, please. So then you have color. So this is where the color can start affecting the emotion or what it is that you're trying to convey within your article. So this was a very different, right? This created a different feeling, same paper, a little bit different. But that other one, I thought like, oh, it was gonna be something good. Like maybe like somebody went on a trip or something. But this one, I see the, the gray scale and I see the blue and I'm like, okay, for me, this kind of poses the feeling of, Maybe there's an issue. Maybe there's something we should be, you know, worried about. And then seeing that there's now that one section within the um, body of the article where there's a quote, right? So maybe it's, you know, something in regards to, I don't know, something, you know, is affecting our deserts or something like that or the habitat. Um, so simple tips for color, choose colors that go well together, use it sparingly. You don't want it to be like complete cover color overload. Um, there is such thing. It can be very distracting. And then um, it, make sure you use the colors to draw attention to certain parts of your article and then play around with color palettes. So maybe um, I know Google Slides is really good. You can choose an entire like kind of like palette theme and then it'll give you all the colors that kind of like accent or complement one another, which is really nice. And if you have this slide deck open, I know we shared it with you, you can also click on those resources and it'll take you to the um, Adobe Color Wheel as well. So you can be able to utilize that as a resource when doing this. Next slide, please. So then we have images, um, important part, and you know, your images say a lot, right? Um, so making sure that your images are high quality, making sure uh, that they're not stretched out. Again, you don't want it to be pixelated. You don't want it had to have watermarks on it. So be very careful with where you pull images from if you're pulling something off of the internet, um, as opposed to taking pictures of actual events that are gonna be um, spoken of in the newspaper. So as you could see in this top image, it's a very large portrait style image but you don't want all that empty space up in the top. So definitely paying attention to cropping it, zooming in and making sure what, what you're trying to show is really standing out. Um, within Google Slides, super easy. All you do is double click an image and then it does like the little black etchings and then you can bring it in, you can shrink it down. Couple of resources. Um, here you have Unsplash. You can get some really nice real life images from Unsplash for free. Um, another one that I didn't link in here, but I started thinking about it is Flat Icon. So Flat Icon is really good because you can go in and you can download um, ping images, which means they have that clear black background. So you can drop them on top of something and it doesn't have that annoying like little white square in the back that you're like, oh, how do I get it to go away? So Flat Icon is really well, they're uh, really good. There's a free version to it, um, but I believe you can also pay for like a year. And I want to say it's like under 10 bucks. It's not cheap, but you can still get tons of stuff through the um, free usage. So definitely utilize Unsplash and Flat Icon. Next slide, please. So layout, again, thinking of the, consider using the thirds rule. So breaking up your layout into chunks of thirds, whether your image is gonna be on the left side with the two text boxes on the right, images on the top, two text on the bottom, just kind of playing around with that arrangement, but always taking that page and breaking it up into thirds if need be. I would recommend, um, and this is actually how I've started creating some, some type, some um, like teacher resources, go to Google Slides and then just go to file page setup. And then if you go to custom, you can change the layout to make it the 8.5 by 11. So that way the layout of your Google Slide is actually the layout of a paper. So if you at some point decided like, hey, I wanna create a flyer, I wanna you know, actually print this newspaper, 
it would already be set up um, in that scale size for you. That would fit your copy paper, of course. And then, I mean, if you decided to do something larger on that, what is 11 by 17, of course, you would change the um, custom size settings the same way. Um, and then always, you know, you can create guides by dragging the ruler and just making sure um, that you have what you need to visually align everything. Next slide. Okay, so right now we're gonna look at a couple of different layout examples and you'll be able to give some feedback. So just visually looking at this layout after what we just quickly breeze through, what are some things that you see that stand out that you're just like, no, your OCD is in overdrive like mine. You could go ahead and unmute yourself too. Okay. So the different types of types, you know, the like you were saying, the fonts, they're all different. So that kind of distracts you a little bit. Right. Definitely the fonts. Like there's like one, two, three different kind of fonts going on. That's what it just looks like right away. What else? The photographs are stretched and they're not properly cropped. Right, right. I mean, that poor little pug already has eyes that pop out. They look like they're popping out even more because they stretched out that photo. But, um, but right, so like maybe had it not been stretched out and like just squared a little bit better, also, like the dog on the top, he has a lot of that extra space on the left side of him. So definitely that. There's probably one other thing, maybe. Well, you talked about color. Oh, I'm sorry. No, oh, go ahead. Okay. Well, you talked about color. So I noticed, okay, they did the red that kind of matches the pink. But then you've got the two pictures with the yellow. So you're kind of like, okay, why is that one dog in pink? Are they highlighting that one dog? And then the color of the text by the other one is green while all the other texts look like they're black. Yes, absolutely. Definitely. So when it goes to the color palette or finding colors that complement each other, there's kind of a lot going on, right? Because we have some soft tones like the that pink and then you have that turquoise down at the bottom but then you see this like hard red and that hard melon so you're just kind of like okay there's a lot going on um and at the same time your eye kind of doesn't really know where to follow right there's not like a clear i mean kind of but not kind of also the breakup of the uh, text mm -hmm. on you know like the earlier examples that you were you know, modeling, um, you're like broken up into two columns. And then th this, the first signal when you open up on the page, to me is like, oh, that's going to be a lot to read. <laughs> you know? Yeah, most definitely. I know I see that and I'm just like, okay, I see this. I'm uh, for the left side, I'm going to need to like hold the book right to my face or make sure that I have my glasses on that day. The right side, I'm like, okay, I could see this, but oh, that's a lot of reading. And not just that, look at the alignment. You see the alignment, how on that second, the right side of the page, the alignment is like right. And then on the left side, you have it like centered and you have, yeah. OCD in overdrive for sure, right here. But so we can see several examples Examples of how we would not want to do it. So I told you I want to see newspapers, but I don't want to see them like this. Okay, don't give me white hairs. Next slide, please. Ah, oh, what do we think about this one? Better? Yeah, better, better, better. <laughs> better. Yeah, that poor pug doesn't have even bigger stretched out popped out eyes. <laughs> So yeah, definitely you can see how I know the whole article is about dogs. Clearly I know that. The color palette kind of goes now. You have the, um, the alignment of the text. It's a lot cleaner. It looks really nice. You have an area for this, uh, the title of the article and notice how the title of the article has a different font compared to the actual body of the article. But the alignment is good and just overall 10 times better, not freaking out, much easier on the eyes and the heart. Okay, next slide. 
So let's quickly brainstorm some ideas for your school newspaper. Really quickly, popcorning out. What are you guys thinking? What are you guys feeling so far? I think I'll try and do a class newsletter. We have already um, emails that go to inform our community about everything. And so I think I'm gonna try and let my fourth graders create a newspaper that I can include in my newsletter that I send weekly. Absolutely. I kind of feel the same. I wanted to do this with fourth graders and so I think something that I can upload to Dojo to communicate, and I'm very fortunate we're uh, campus wide Dojo. So, you know, start it off small and then hopefully to get it to where we would send it out to the entire campus. Yeah, absolutely. Any other ideas? Yeah, it's always okay to start small and then eventually take over the world. So um, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So right here under this Let's Design, you have a digital newspaper template that has been linked in here for you guys to have access to. Um, Juan, can we click on that and open it up so we can share it or show it? Thank you so much. And um, I will, because he's in here, for those of you that do not know Mr. Ernest Gonzalez, he is my colleague. He is also an ed tech and design coordinator. Complete credit to this layout, to this template right here. It all came from his creative mind. For some reason, I was gonna say it looks like <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say it's I think it's missing stuff. Hmm. Is it just like a can you reload? Try doing this. Can you go to um, can you go to file make a copy? I think that's what it is because it's saying view only view right only? now. Yeah, yeah. Try that. Copy. I may have linked that wrong. I apologize. I thought I had did it right. Oh, there it goes. We could go in and um, I'll change the link to that. Yeah, try clicking on the word layout at the top there. You know how it says background layout theme at the top middle? Yeah. Uh, right. Ne next one over. Ne go to layout. There you go. So in layout, you'll see the different templates you can use for your articles. Yeah, so you'll have, um, you can see how there's like layouts for two images with an area for a title. Um, there's different, you know, just the entire way that it's separated. If you have one large uh, example of a photo with um, three separate columns, I'm not sure why that's showing or why it's not showing. That is so strange. Let's see. So with that copy, can you share that um, in, can you go to get a share link? And then do uh, anyone? And then we'll share that in the um, chat, just in case we have somebody in here who's not from SAISD. But if he selects viewer, is it gonna do the same thing that it just did the last time? Cause that was- the well, if, it, if, it, if it shows up view, um, you just can download just make a copy. copy, but here's another okay. trick too. Um, go ahead and paste it in the chat real quick. Okay, so yeah, so with these, um, if you'll click through the different slides, I see y'all are in there. There's some of y'all in there. So the second so, link, Brandy, that I just posted, if, as soon as you click it, it'll just make a copy for you. Oh, okay, thank you so much. Yeah, so you can see all the different, you know, styles. You can be creative, you can, you know, pick and pull. Um, you can find one that fits what it is that you want to, showcase what you want to show um but yeah i mean we just 
we wanted to be able to provide you guys with something to just walk away with. And again, if you notice these um, slides, that page was uh, customized for the eight and a half by 11. So this is what it would look like when you go in and customize that um, page size. Do we have any questions? Yes, Brandy. Hi. Yes, um, I have a question. Maybe you went over it, but so like, let's say we use your template because I think I would use it at the beginning, and then when like to make the next month, let's say we're doing monthly, so we'll make a copy of the template, and then just title it June. No, no, like February. And then every day, every month, we would just save it like that. Is that how it Yeah, you can do that. That way you can have archives. <gasps> Look at you. But yes. Oh, I don't even know. <laughs> just like, how would I start? <laughs> so like, just start. So like, oh, I know Ernest shared that link, right? The one that was copied. So you can open uh, that up and you could do like, what is it? Like main like main copy or something like that, title it that way, and okay. then make another copy. And then maybe it'll be like August, like August issue, uh -huh. um, you know, 2022. And then you can, once you figure out the layout, like maybe it's, you already know which slide's going to be your teacher spotlight, which slide's going to be your student spotlight, which slide's going to be your library corner. So once you have like the whole layout and the flow of the information for your newspaper, um, and then after that, it's just like plugging in and replacing at that point, you know, so what you'll do is title it for August or maybe September right there's not too much news going to be in August, but then so once you have that actual layout and the flow like the entire body of it developed, then for the next month you're just like okay make a copy now we're going to rename it and now it's September is uh, September issue 2022. Right. Okay. And so then you have um, already the body. And so now it's like, OK, who's going to be our teacher spotlight this month? Who's going to be, you know, our library? Who's going to go interview the counselor or, you know, the librarian and find out what is something important information that needs to be shared with the community um, for this month? So then it's just a simple of swapping out the information every month, but just building and having that main one. Um, from the get-go. Okay, thank, I hope you're gonna be at Ball next year. I mean, <laughs> so you can help me when I get stuck. You know what, even if I'm not at Ball, I will help you anytime you get stuck. You have okay. my cell phone number and I am always just a drive away. Okay, thanks Brandy. Yeah, of course, anytime. Do we have any other questions? You're all excited? Are you all going to build your newspaper template over your summer break? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, or are you gonna log that. out today? It's like out of sight, out of mind. I'll <laughs> think about it a week before I go back to work. <laughs> the link for me is still not working properly. I still have those empty spaces. And it did you click on the link that Ernest shared, um, Miss V? Oh, and hi, by the way. Hello. I was able to see your presentation the other day. I wasn't logged in, but I saw it from the command center. I saw your Oh, feet. cool. <laughs> um, did you click on that link uh, that was yes, shared? Yes, the copy the link. One, the copy? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And did you click on it? Yes, I did. And it and opens the same way as it opened for, for you. Hmm, I wonder why it's doing that. That is really weird. Now, if you go to the layout button and you click layout, can you see the different layout templates? Let me check and see. Let me go to layout. So click on that drop down where it says like layout okay. and see if it shows you the different template options. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. Maybe the internet's being wonky. I have no clue. I'm going to blame the internet. It's not you. It's not me. It's the internet. 